Hi, this is Kelsey Fikowski for AP Gov Review, and in this video segment, we're going to be looking at amendments 11 through 27 and show you some easy, simple tricks to memorizing them should they appear on the AP Gov exam, which is very likely. So, the 11th Amendment, and by definition in its most simplified form, prevents a citizen of one state or a citizen of another country from suing another state in federal court. And at the end of the day, this is a huge win for the states because it is protecting the state's immunity as well as their sovereignty or freedom. It gives them more jurisdiction. So again, in its most simplified form, a citizen of Ohio could not sue the state of New Jersey. And a citizen of France or whatever country you'd like to pick cannot sue California or any of the other 49 states. So a good way to remember this just by the 11th Amendment, and really we're going to be working off these numbers as a way to memorize them, is 1v1, right? You can't have a citizen of one state suing um, another one. So 1v1 is not allowed. I do say this at the 11th Amendment, I can't really ever recall ever showing up on an AP Gov exam, but just have it in your back pocket just in case. All right, the 12th Amendment, this by definition, members of the Electoral College, which is used to select the president, must cast two separate ballots, one for the president and another for the vice president. Prior to the 12th Amendment, the vice president was actually the runner-up, so it was actually the loser in the presidential election. And as you would imagine, this could create some major issues. And just look at the election of 1800, as a reason why the 12th Amendment was needed, hence Aaron Burr. So a good way to remember this with the 12th Amendment, one ballot, two ballots, right? So one ballot for the president, the second for the vice president. All right, going on to the 13th, 14th, and 15th, and I lump these together purposely because these emerge after the Civil War. The 13th Amendment, simply all you need to know, is now slaves are free. Slavery is completely um, abolished in its entity, at least on paper. 14th Amendment is dealing with citizens, and Unit 6 is all about the 14th Amendment. In particular, it is known as the Equality Amendment. And again, this is in a very simplified form, again, in the sixth unit, and there are multiple videos on this on my YouTube channel that deal with many equality uh, cases. This has been a major issue and a major amendment for uh, Supreme Court cases, but again, in its simplified form, all naturalized or citizens born in the United States are guaranteed citizenship rights in equal protection, meaning that specifically equal protection, you can't enforce the law one way for somebody and differently for another person, regardless of your race, ethnicity, in terms of how the 14th Amendment has been interpreted over time, that the law has to be applied equally. It provides equal protection for all naturalized and citizens born in the United States. So that is the Equality Amend Amendment. And then the 15th Amendment simply guarantees the right to vote, that it cannot be denied or abridged as the result of race, color, or previous condition of servitude, meaning slavery. So this was a big amendment, amendment for giving former slaves now the right to vote. A good way to remember the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment is that free citizens can vote, or free citizens vote. Free because they are now free. Citizens, because the 14th Amendment now makes these former slaves citizens, and now they also have the right to vote. So free citizens vote. Do note that with the 15th Amendment, it says nothing about gender. Women do not gain suffrage by any means under the 15th Amendment. You're going to have to wait until the 19th Amendment. So 13th, 14th, and 15th, remember, wrap that up within the Civil War. Okay, 16th Amendment, very easy. Congress has now uh, instituted, along with this ratification of the states, a federal income tax. And of course, when you're 16, think about getting your first job, you pay taxes. So it's a great way to remember that you're 16, you pay taxes. So this is the first federal income tax through this amendment. 17th Amendment. Prior to the 17th Amendment, senators were uh, elected by the state legislatures. So the state legislatures would pick uh, senators who they thought would be best for perhaps their own interests, um, and it was not voted upon directly by the people. With the 17th Amendment, what it does is it allows for 
senators or people running for Senate to be directly voted upon by the people, not the state legislatures. The 17th Amendment prior to this point, the Senate was known as the Millionaires Club, where these millionaires could, again, be uh, elected by state legislatures. That money was really influencing politics, as if it's not already today. But certainly, uh, this gives people much more freedom and latitude in terms of voting now on senators like they never had prior to the 17th Amendment. So to remember this one, use some alliteration here. This is 17th uh, senators or the 17th is for senators so really play off of that s 18th amendment prohibition of alcohol simple way to think of it 18 year olds cannot drink right cannot so prohibition 18 year olds cannot drink hence the 18th amendment 19th amendment women can vote and we see this coming after world war one Good way to remember this, one woman equals nine months. Think, for example, pregnancy. There are also other ones out there as well, but I think this one helps to really establish that as well. 20th Amendment. This now sets the inauguration date for the president, for the new president, that is, uh, from March to now January 20th. That is the specific date, January 20th, for the president to prevent more of a lame duck presidency, right? Think about election days in November. So you just have to wait from November all the way to March. So the president who's going out of office has a good amount of time. And that is, of course, your lame duck presidency. And to prevent and sort of shorten that, the 20th Amendment comes about, and that is set on the 20th day of January. So as you would imagine, since this is the 20th Amendment, it is set on the 20th day of January. So that's a great way to remember the inauguration date. All right, the 21st Amendment. This is one we see prohibition not working. People are disobeying the law. And as a result, prohibition is repealed. A good way to remember this is that 21-year-olds are now allowed to drink. And that, of course, is the legal drinking age. The 22nd Amendment. This officially sets two terms for the presidency. Great way to remember this. Two terms, 2-2. Two, two. Two, two, two terms. And prior to the 22nd Amendment, there was no official amendment. There was no federal law. It was simply done on tradition. Of course, we saw a president like FDR sort of break with tradition. But nevertheless, after his death, we see it's not too far after that. The 22nd Amendment come about officially setting two terms. All right, going into the 23rd Amendment. This states that residents of Washington, D.C. in the District of Columbia have the right to vote for representatives in the Electoral College. It's important to note that they still have no representation in Congress. That's why if you look at their license plates, they have a great motto, uh, taxation without representation, because they do not have any representation in Congress. However, the 23rd Amendment does extend their right to vote for the president in the Electoral College only. Good way to remember this is play some rhyme games here. 2-3 equals D.C., meaning D.C. can now vote only in the presidential election through the Electoral College. All right, moving on to the 24th Amendment. This officially outlaws poll taxes. And, of course, this was a major issue that you had really disenfranchised people who could not afford to vote um, because of a poll tax. So as a result, this officially is going to outlaw that. And again, you're going to be playing off the numbers here. 2-4, leave the poll tax at the door. I apologize for however cheesy that may sound, but I always like to tell my students that's a great way to sort of remember that. All right, going on to the 25th Amendment. This allows for the vice president to officially become the president in the event that the president dies, resigns, is removed after impeachment or becomes impaired for whatever reason in his or her duties. So this is going to be remembered once again through a nice little rhyme scheme, two, five, die. Unfortunately, it's a little dark there, but nevertheless, a good way to remember the 25th Amendment. All right, winding down now. 26th Amendment officially allows 18-year-olds to vote. In some of the historical contexts, while this may be more appropriate for AP U.S. history, but of course, is relevant here is that you had 18 year olds, you know, going into Vietnam, being drafted, and you know the thought process was, well, they can shoot somebody, but they can't vote for their own country. So that's one of the impetuses behind it, behind the 26th Amendment. And as a result, 18 year olds will now have the right to vote. 
good way to remember this, play off of the 8, 2 plus 6, 8, add 10 to it, you get 18 in a weird math way. Never said that I taught math, only social studies. So a good way to remember that. And our final amendment here is the 27th Amendment. It's our last amendment. While there have been many other amendments proposed, they have never been officially ratified, such as the Equal Rights Amendment. But nevertheless, the 27th Amendment states that Congress cannot raise its salary during the current term. It takes effect the next congressional term. So a good way to remember this is that this is the last amendment, and the last thing we want is Congress raising its own pay. So again, those are the uh, 11th through the 27th Amendment. Hopefully you can try to use some of these ways to remember them. They can be a little cumbersome, but at the end of the day, these are, for the most part, pretty straightforward. These are ones that you might see on the AP Gov exam, and best of luck if you do. Thanks for listening.